Oh, are we live? I don't even know if we're live. He's so hot. Are we live? I think we're live. <laughs> Who throws the lighter? Who throws the lighter? <laughs> Who does it? Thanks. Oh, we are here at Cherokee Lake uh, hanging out with the boys. A little podcast time. That's right. Fifth tour stop of the year. Uh, we normally do them at the meetings, but we rented a fan, fan tap. You know, fan, I can't even say the word. Fantabulous. Fantabulous. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Fantastic lake house here with the view. And we, I said, you know, we got to do the podcast from here. Cool. I mean, because the dam's right there. We're launching right there. That's like the coolest backdrop. No cussing, please. Coolest backdrop ever. <laughs> no, I've turned a new leaf, my friend. <laughs> I have. I said a bad word the last tournament. I do apologize. I got my only spinnerbait hung up in a tree. And I tried to drive in there and almost ripped the trolling motor off. Literally broke the trolling motor prop. And I had to get out and wade. And I thought it would be a good idea to take your shoes off. And those rocks are sharp, dude. They rocks hurt. hurt. It was like man. needles in your eye. It was awful. It was awful. So I, I had a little meltdown. I do apologize for that. But that was great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of interesting comments on that. So, But we're here. Graham was good. Graham was good for uh, all everyone except Andrew and I. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We pretty much, we drove the suck bus pretty much full time. No, I really one. drove the suck bus. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was one of those weeks where like everybody, it's complete opposite from here. Like everyone called everybody every five minutes. Did you call right. one yet? Have you caught one yet? Boats running down the lake, swinging in. Dude, have you caught a keeper yet? I mean, it was, co and here, no phone calls. No one's called. You haven't called one time. And did you notice you when, haven't when called one time. all got back to the house, everybody yeah. was just like, no one was saying anything. Yeah. yeah. We were all just kind of like. I was talking to everybody. Because I was just like, <laughs> I hadn't talked to anybody all week. Dude, I've waypointed places that, like, I thought it was a bite. <laughs> like, I think pretty sure it was just like I hit a stick or yeah. something. I was like, maybe in a bite. Let me waypoint that. So it was it was terrible. But good job, b -Lat and Thank you. John and Tom got out of there with a check. It was mm -hmm. good. And uh, probably the, I would say the hardest tournament I've ever Fish. It was hard. It was, it was definitely hard. tough. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, I did well. I think John and Tom can admit, like, it's one of those you feel like you just kind of slid through that one. It wasn't like it was yeah. good. Yeah. It was not good. It was very, very hard to catch fish. But if you caught five, it was very good. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I did what Tom said in the interview. He said, someone's going to run to the back of a creek and catch them. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, well, I guess I'm going to go do that. <laughs> so. the, best, the best story I have to bring back from Grand was. John came in after day one, and he was like, um, "Dude, man, I fish changed a little bit in there. I had to, I had to kind of go off. I had to kind of, I had to go fish deep for him, like offshore." And we're like, "Really? Like, yeah, dude. I turned my drip finder on. It was like 4.9 foot, and they weren't like on the bank anymore. They were like off, like 15 yeah. foot and like four foot of water, dude. Yeah. I had like deep stuff. We're like, what? What'd you say? Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, I was like, they're they're all on the bank. They're, where else can you fish? And John's like, mine aren't on the bank. It's like I'm seeing them on the graph. I'm like, what is he talking about? It's like, dude, they're out there in five foot of water. Five foot of water. <laughs> it was for me. He's like, like that is the bank. On him. Yeah. I'm dropping on him. I said, right John, that's the bank. Deeper. Yeah. It was a lot deeper than normal. I mean, that's I like getting right on the bank. So yeah. Oh, you stuck your rod down and it went almost to the yeah. reel, and you're like, <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> put my life vest back on. I can't swim. <laughs> that was good. Mm. It was good. Well, we're here at Cherokee, completely hey, before, different. Yes. Before yes. we wrap up Grand, you know, we have a competition between yeah. us, right? And you go for the the money and, and you try to get points and yeah. stuff, but it's still a little competition. We yeah. gotta have something to shoot for. Like we gotta start having a little competition. A trophy, we go after trophies. I mean, you've won the cup. You're the winningest FLW fisherman of all time. We got the champ down next to you. So I wanna award you the Green Bean Grand Lake Hammer <laughs> Cup. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, That's straight from Tom's uh, I lunch box. They're pretty good, but <laughs> yes, he eats those you, every my day. friend, win. Oh, Green from the last cup. one? Yeah, oh, yeah you're the top finisher, dude. Green Bean Cup. Man. Green Bean Cup. Hey, this... Yes, thank you. Thank you. This, Billy, that was great. Good words. idea, Billy. Lost for Billy, words, that was good. Uh, good idea, yeah, Tom. Awesome. Yeah, you should put that right beside your trophy. I think I will. That's awesome. <laughs> put it in your trophy. Well, it's, it's actually been open, so you can put let's like a vase. You can put right, water put in there, put in some it. little flowers. It's good for you, it says right there. Yes. <laughs> great for you. Picked and packed the same day, so you know it's good. Man, let's move on. We've got to move on now. Billy's, Billy's getting us going. All right, oh, so Billy. we're here at Grand. No, no, I just messed that up. We're, we're here at Cherokee. No, we're not. We're Thank done. goodness we're not at Grand. <laughs> we're at Cherokee. Yes. We are here at Cherokee. Um, it's the springtime. We have we all have shorts on, pretty much. Yep. Flip-flops. It's pretty nice weather out. 
fish are going to be doing a lot of things. You know, we've never had a tournament here. There's never been a tour event here. There's never been a Costa series. So there's little information about how this lake fishes uh, on a multi-day event. And we're really not real sure is smallmouth the way to go or is largemouth the way to go. So there's just a lot of unknowns. But the weather's beautiful. As you can see behind us, it's going to be a warm week. I think uh, I think there's going to be a lot of fish caught, obviously. Uh, it's, a, it's a highland. I would call this a highland river reservoir. You know, it's a part of the Holston River. Is that right? I believe so, yeah. yeah I think I it's a whole, South you can Holston correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, yeah, it's, it's one of these mountain rivers that comes out of North Carolina. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. What were the water temps this week that you kept seeing? Uh, I, I was 61, 62, and then last day of practice, like some areas, like in the 70s. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. 70 That's degrees? Super warm. 67, yeah. 68. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, um, again, the, the, the question is, you know, do you target smallmouth? Do you target largemouth? You know, what is what is the right thing to do here? And I think that's, uh, that's you know, I don't know what to say. You know, what do you think? No, I mean, that that's what I, I mean. I, I don't know how well these fish are going to replenish themselves. So it's like, you know, go after the largemouth, um, you know, and, and thinking that they might be bigger. Um, and then you got guys posting, you know, four pound smallmouth. And, you know, is that, are, are those going to be, is that going to be an endless bite where guys can just go through the entire tournament and there's that many of them out there? I mean, when you when you get out in this lake, it's not, it, it does, it reminds me of being up north, you know, yeah. in a great lake, uh, you know, smaller, but, uh, you know, so that part, you know, I haven't caught smallmouth all week, so that part makes me nervous, you know, <laughs> thinking, you know, man, is this going to be like a, uh, you know, a Lake Erie or like a, you know, Champlain smallmouth bite, but I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Tom? I have no idea. That is, it is a great unknown, yeah. It's a. Uh, it, it was kind of like the first time I went to Cumberland. You come in there, and it, that was a little tough too. And guys are wondering, and you come in, and here we're saying maybe ten pounds gets a check, maybe twelve pounds, maybe it's who knows. And it's gonna be tight. And I think we're all gonna come in there on day one. You've got a bag, and you kind of like, uh, yeah, is this good? Is this bad? I mean, right. I have no idea what how he did until he actually the first day weigh in. All of a sudden realized, wow, I. I burned way too many fish, and I still eased off. I, I don't need this much. Yeah. A day I just wrecked my spot, or wow, I'm really behind the eight yeah. ball. Yeah, I, I think I think that's going to be the trick is is playing it smart in this one, managing yeah. managing your fish, knowing really what the weights are going to be, which is the unknown at this point. But I don't know. What do you think the weights are going to be day one and day? You know. What do you um, think? I'm I'm thinking somewhere. Um, I think day one. If you're talking about day one, probably it'll be a lot of 12, 13s. 12 to 14 pound bags and I think you'll see very a couple of high teens yeah 17 to yeah. 19 pound maybe maybe one 20 pound bag or so one, you know a couple of 20 pound bags but day two I think everybody's gonna be in trouble yeah I think, I think the weights will fall off don't you like think heavily well I mean I, the only thing we can really base it off is Cumberland mm -hmm. you know because this is a it matches up extremely well but it one thing Cumberland does is it you can spread out on that lake mm -hmm. And it has a great population of smallmouth, just like this one does. And it has a good population, if, in my opinion, a, probably a better population of largemouth. And if you look at the weights, it took, the last two times we've been to Cumberland, it took around 24 to 25 pounds to get paid. Or 23 to 25 pounds, okay. around in that range. Yep. And So 12 and a half a day. So, so 12 and a half a day, I think you're looking at a check. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, yeah, they're, they're biting right now, and they're going to catch them. Uh, but I think Brian's right. I think second day of the tournament is going to be the real factor is when you go out there and it's like man i was getting x amount of bites in practice and now i have i've got seven right you know yeah. <laughs> i think that's the, the reality yeah. of it yeah. hey, maybe la cumberland those the small are less. big when you won i mean those are big fat yeah. small right they just run heavier uh, the one first time they had to be 18 to keep them there's an ample supply of spots so if you get in trouble you can go fill out the limit not as many here and then largemouth there's a lot of good largemouth and there's like flooded forests and stuff that second year. I mean, there's big largemouth there, and they're just randomly mixed in. Well, that second year, though, we could weigh in 12-inch. So, right. like, that's the best, the one that I would say we go off yeah. the best, and that's around 24 and a half pounds. It was 24.10, actually, for the last check. Yeah. So. This place is going to it's gonna feel the pressure. Here's the deal. <laughs> this lake isn't big. I mean, what you see behind us here, just a few more miles past what you can farthest see right there is the bridge, and then that's kind of the main lake, and then it separates into the couple little rivers. It's not a lot of water. So I think a lot of guys are fishing the same banks. A lot of guys are fishing the same pockets. There's not a lot of docks on this lake. So if there's a dock bite going on, I mean, that's going to get pretty much, you know, exhausted the first day. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's going to be one of those deals where somebody's going to catch a big, big bag and might be able to, win, might be able to ride that right. 
the separation. Absolutely. You know, Food's you catch a, a 21, 22 yeah. pound bag, right. and then you catch 14 or 15 or 13 or 14 of smallmouth the That's rest of the week. Good, though. Right. That's you know, you could really you could good. probably run away with it. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, we're, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna finish up this little segment. We're gonna come back with some fishing tips and how we catch fish out here on this lake, and in the springtime, and uh, we'll finish that up. And then at the very end, we're gonna do a little story time. We got some good ones for you. So stay tuned for another little segment here. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, welcome back. We're crying right now, laughing because uh, we can't show you what we just talked about. As for maybe some outtakes one day down the road, but nevertheless, it was that was pretty funny, huh? Mm. Funny. When the channel gets just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a whole other deal. <laughs> but fishing tip time. We talked about Cherokee. We talked about Grand. You know, it's the springtime, and on a lake like this, this is a great time to talk about how to catch fish in a lake like this because there's a lot of diversity and a lot of options, right? right. So I think we can all give the viewers a really good solid fishing tip on how to catch fish. So why don't we start with you, Andrew, on fishing a highland reservoir like this or a river system like this with you, you know, smallmouth and largemouth. Well, you know, something I've learned over the, the last couple of years, you know, we've gone to, like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. Cumberland. Mm -hmm. And that was my first experience on more of a highland reservoir when we went there. And it was a big learning curve for me. I think the first time I caught them there, I was on a jerk bait exclusively. And the second time I caught them on a spinner bait mm -hmm. with painted blades. And that's what I'm going to talk about is when you come to a highland reservoir, one of the big things targeting largemouth and smallmouth is throwing a painted blade spinner bait. And what I mean by that is you take a, a half ounce willow, double willow spinner bait, white, solid white or white and chartreuse blades. Something that just, I mean, it's just ugly. Or, or I got a, Billy, real quick. You keep telling your story. Yeah. Grab the spinnerbait that's on the deck of my boat. My boat's right there so, behind me. So I got, I got th it right this there. Is, this is a big ticket. I mean, it's a thing that they do at Table Rock and some of those those lakes over there. And I'm telling you right pink now. Pink one, pink one, one. The one of the first times I ever caught them on a spinnerbait that good was at Cumberland. I bet I caught 30 or 40 in just a few hours. And, I mean, I destroyed two spinnerbaits. Just, I mean, wrecked them. And it was the most fun I'd ever done. Yes. And, yeah, so, like... I know that looks ridiculous, but you start getting around smallmouth, that is like what they eat. And I mean, like uh, St. Clair, uh, Champlain, anything super bright is a, a great or way to catch a lot pink, of bites. Right? Pepto pink <laughs> is a great way to get a lot of bites. So that's my tip is don't be scared to throw something just yeah. outrageous to catch fish. I remember a guy at Beaver, you did real good in that tournament, and he was catching largemouth. The, the water was real muddy up that river, mm -hmm. and he was throwing this pink I one. I remember that one, yeah. yeah. And he, he caught them really good the first two days. Had like 20 pounds of largemouth or uh -huh. something crazy, and he was throwing that. And uh, I think this was at Cumberland, too, that a lot of guys caught him on that pink one. Yeah. At Cumberland. So, yeah, the painted blade deal. Crazy. Yep, yep. What about you, B-Lap? Uh, spinning rods. So many people mm -hmm. are scared of spinning rods. You got to get over it. Learn how to use it. It's a tool. You got to have it in your you arsenal. It this like oh. no no learn how to use it right <laughs> nobody spends enough time with it it is not a sissy stick it's not a fairy wand it's a tool a mechanic wouldn't all use all big wrenches imagine if you try to use all big wrenches i'm a man i use big wrenches <laughs> when you need a three eighths you need a three eighths when you need a half remember, you need remember a half remember when it used to be the carolina rig oh i had to go out there and throw yeah, that yeah. old ball and chain yeah, you know, yeah. Like. yeah. it's a tool yeah, learn your spinning rods Absolutely. this time of year when uh Fish kind of get stabilized, they're spawning, they don't really get outside of the area. And spinner rod is just a great way to use lighter baits. Mm -hmm. you can, your presentation is just better with a spinning rod. So And, and a lot of pressure, you know, yeah, that, yeah. And, and the fish get so much pressure during the spawn that that, yep. that spinning yeah. rod is a, a big tool. I, I think too, with what Brian's saying, it, you know, cause I, I, like, I use a spinning rod, believe it or not, quite a bit now. And but I did have a, lot, a hard time kind of transitioning to the spinning rod thing because I just wanted to throw a bait caster. So I have a drop shot rigged up on a spinning rod over there, and I also ha also have a drop shot rigged up on a bait caster. The difference is with the bait caster, and I think this is the advantage to a spinning rod is that you have better slack line. Like when you pitch a that. drop shot in, it goes straight to the bottom. And the line Your lines up. lays flat. It's a natural. The bait naturally goes down in the water. With a bait caster, you have to feed line off. And believe it or not, even just pulling line off makes your bait kind of do some weird things as it's dropping. And it doesn't drop straight into the zone as much as it sometimes pendulums out if you don't get the line out. Right. So, yeah. you know. Another thing that, that uh, you need to realize when you're talking about spinning tackle is most of the time we're using lighter baits, we're using a lighter line. Mm -hmm. And the drag system on a spinning reel is mm -hmm. by far way smoother. If you're using 
10 pound test or less, it's really best to use a spinning rod if you can because that drag is so much smoother on a spinning rod than it is a bait caster. So if one comes to the boat and he decides he wants to dog you out, if you got a bait caster, it's hard to kind of adjust that drag just mm -hmm, right and mm -hmm. it can be a little inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So you're going to lose less fish, in my opinion, if you're using yeah, a spinning rod. I, I did that mistake because I, I, like I said, I have one rigged up with a bait caster, but I did that one other time in a tournament where I went all bait caster. And I, kept, I lost a lot of fish at the boat. Yes. And yes. my rod was too stiff. So the one I have rigged up now, even though it's on a bait caster, it's a right. super light rod. Yeah. Super light rod, and That's I back good. my drag way down. So uh, those are good tips for sure. Spinning rod is the deal. You know, for me, this time of the year, it's all about uh, fish either on the beds or getting ready to spawn or just finishing up. There's all those three things kind of happening at this moment. And so it's all about how to find those fish. And for me, it's uh, curving water couple baits that I like to fish and cover water with to try to find those fish, whether it's a, a guarding fish, garden fry, you can kind of see the fish chase out, or a spawning fish might come up and look at your bait, is a swim bait. Yeah. You know, I've got two or three swim baits tied on over there. I've got some line throughs. I've got some wheelless versions. And uh, it's a great search tool. You can catch a lot of fish on the swim bait as well, but almost in practice, I use it more for finding the fish, you know, locating the fish. And uh, I, lighter, the better. Uh, you, you don't want a fast moving swim bait. You want to have something that's going to go really, really slow because that gives that fish enough time to get mad, right? The, the swim bait goes through there pretty quick. The fish is like, oh, I don't need to chase that off. It's already gone. But when it's slowly going through there, I'm talking about reeling it like this fast. I mean, the bait is just moving super, super slow. It, it makes those fish mad. They'll come up and look at it and turn away or the garden, uh, the fish that's garden fry or try to eat it. Uh, or if it's a pre-spawn situation going on, those fish that are staging up will come up and hit it. So gotcha. swim bait this time of the year is really, really good. I like to throw that on a bait caster, and I change sizes. I usually throw, believe it or not, a little bit bigger swim bait. You're not trying to match the hatch, right? You're not trying to get the fish to eat it because he's hungry. You're trying to make him mad. So a bigger swim bait, like a five or six inch, a lot of times will draw those fish up better than a three inch bait. A three inch bait they're feeding is better to catch them on, but when they're guarding or gotcha. chasing because they're chasing fry, that bigger, because it goes a little slower, it's got a little bit more action. You want a bait that has a lot of wiggle to it. Uh, I throw it on 17 pound line. Everything's real controlled and just try to get it real close to the cover. Try to visually think where would a bed be that I can't see, you know, beside a dock post, uh, beside a rock, beside a lay down tree and just reel it through there. And if you see that fish come up, doop, 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 waypoint, and then you can come back in the tournament you know, catch that fish either on a swim bait or on a drop shot or a Ned rig or something like that. So um, that's my tip this time of the year. Spend a lot of time on the trolling motor and you'll find lots of areas that are have that have a, a high concentration of fish. That was a good one. I, liked I actually learned a little bit from that one. <laughs> right. um, but, so, but it's way deeper than five foot right, most of the time, right, so you're so not going to like that. Yeah. Um, so my uh, track record on uh, lakes like this is uh, very poor, like Cumberland. I've never called them, really. Um, but uh, Smith Lake, I've caught them there and mm -hmm. stuff. And it, um, for me, it's uh, I, I'll usually do well when um, when it's a warming trend, when you got you know a lot of fish moving up or getting a lot of bites. Um, and and I, I go, I kind of go away from a lot of. I do a little bit of finesse fishing, but I, I go more for um, instead of getting 20 bites a day, I'm gonna go for like five to seven bites a day. And that, you know, I'm gonna throw a big jig. You know, I'm gonna still have it on braid. Um, you know, and throw chatterbait, spinnerbait. And uh, I'm gonna cover a ton of water, you know, and just and I'm gonna I'm fish for four pounders. Fish for four. That's a uh, mark yeah. that down. That's yeah. a great so, tip. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, not I'm not fishing pounders. for those two and a half no, like y'all no, are. I ain't messing with them. But so I mean, you know, so that's just what. And you know, sometimes you catch them, and sometimes you know, like come. I don't. When sometimes you don't, you don't catch them. I don't know when sometimes nah, you yeah, don't catch yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, I like I like that. You know, it's just fish for those bigger, bigger fish that are in the area. I'm just fishing for the five biggest ones. I don't know what you're doing. That's right. What do you think, Tom? And I, I, I was going to say, kind of ex expand on that to thy own self be true. I mean, it, it's the, basically go find, if you're fishing a new lake, go find the spot that looks like home that you recognize. Uh, they may catch them here on, on spy bait. Or, I've been looking for cattails and hyacinths the entire time I've been here, and I haven't seen any. So that theory for me yeah, is not going to work. If yeah. you live in Florida, you are uh, in trouble in yeah. the 49 states. But for the rest of us, Go find the d dirtier water. There's not a heat prevailing largemouth population, but there are. John has made a career out of, of doing that. Brian talked about it at Grand last time. Rocks are, I'm, I'm rip-rap from ideal. 
I've done well before, didn't catch anything in practice, went there and made that work. The, the best example is when your dad, when Roland fished with us, we'd go to like Table Rock or something, these highland lakes, clear. He'd go out and he'd get somebody to tell him, man, uh, you know, jerk baits and stuff out here. And it's seven year old Roland with trying to do jerk baits and stuff. Ah, I'm not catching them. Next day, he'd just. He's like, well, I need some more of the mega fish jerk baits. What are those things called? Uh, the, <laughs> you got any more of the, the fluorescent line? No, fluor, fluorocarbon. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, not the chalky stuff, right? Like back in the day. No, no, no. Not. Not no, not that. But then you you go up the river, find the dirtier water the next day, and just take a square bill, yeah, a half ounce spinner bait and a black right. jude blue jig yep. with a pork rind on the back. Yep. He'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm a decent dad. I'm like, uh, 24. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. like what? I mean, yeah. that's they'd be leading the tournament. So it's you know, I mean, if there's history right here, yep. kind of go find the part of the lake that's home. If you're good at docks, even if there's not a lot, if you're a dirty water fisherman, if you're offshore, yep. try to make the most of it. And perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, that's good stuff. So we're going to take another short break and uh, we're going to come back with a little story time. We've got some good ones for you. The title of these stories is the crazy things that have happened to you in a boat or while you're on a boat. So get your stories ready, guys. We'll be right back. All right. We're back. Story time. You know, I was trying to think of something that we could all kind of talk about that was interesting you know, some of the behind the scenes stories that people just don't ever really get to hear. And, you know, being that we've got John here and we're in a river system that probably has some backwater areas, I started thinking about, for me, for my story, what I did at the Forestwood Cup back when, I think it was Luke Clawson won the Forestwood Cup then. He beat me, I came in second. But I took a jet boat, I, I pulled a John Cox, I took a aluminum jet boat and I went way up the, Chocolata Creek there on, on uh, Logan Martin Lake in Alabama. And I did it on day two of the tournament. Day three and four, if, if I made the cut, I wouldn't be able to fish out of an aluminum boat because they provide you with a boat for the finals. So I knew I only had one day to kind of pull this off. First day I fished in the lake in my bass boat and I called them okay, but I felt like I needed to make up a little ground. So I took jet boat and uh, it was a waterfall. Okay, and I literally had to go up the waterfall and get into the backwaters. So the problem was, is that when you go up the waterfall, you go about 50, 60 feet, and there was a hard turn to the right where the water kind of streamed through. And making that turn in a flat bottom jet boat, they don't turn <laughs> sharp, right? They slide. No, no. <laughs> so I get my co-angler. Well, first of all, I get to the weigh-in that morning or the blast off that morning, and nobody knows I'm doing the jet boat thing. So there I am in this like 18 foot aluminum boat jet drive and I've got my six rods in the middle, center console standing up like a saltwater boat you know like just sitting <laughs> yeah, there that's awesome. and I've got my rain gear on and people are like who is this guy like they're thinking I'm, it's a yeah. fan but like who is this guy and I go through boat check and they're looking and I'm and I you know finally people start coming up to me they're like what are you doing I go oh you don't want to know I'm so sorry I'm gonna destroy them today <laughs> so my co-angler had a co-angler and I tell him I said look dude we're gonna get out of push pole can't get out of the boat to advance yourself in you can push yourself out so i said look dude we're going to jump the waterfall and he's like what i go yeah we're going to jump this waterfall and when we get up there i got to turn the motor off throw the control motor down on the water put the thing on 100 it's a 100 pound thrust bin coda hold us in position you got to take the push pole and hold us from going backwards because we can't flow out of the if we go backwards yeah. off the All waterfall bad. we're sunk and i'm All like dude bad. if we lose grip and go backwards we're going to go down and probably it's going to be bad be bad. So he's like, are you serious? I go, yeah, I'm really serious. So I get there and he's like, oh my gosh. So it's like a, like a two and a half, three foot little waterfall. Mm -hmm. And I tell him, I said, look, dude, you got to lay down on the boat because I don't want you to get thrown out. So he lays down like the fetal position of the floor of the boat. And I get back and I'm like, wing. It's going like 32 miles an hour, right? <laughs> and I hit it. Wah, wah. I shut the thing off, run to the front, throw the troll motor down. He jumps up just like clockwork. We push, we holds us and I troll the motor and finally get in there, dude. And it's all calm. And it was like, 15 lay downs here and 15 there and I go whack 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 all the way around it and he catches a whole bunch and I catch a whole bunch 16 pounds and I said let's go and we did like a raft down you know I just wow. back out of there 32 mile an hour back to the to the way in and dropped 16 and a half pounds of spotted bass so oh, wow. it was fun wow. so that was a uh, kind of a crazy story jumping waterfalls for sure that's mine so what about you Belat you got any crazy ones not near as drama field as that was <laughs> It, not even close, uh, but I, I fished a BFL regional. I think it was actually my it was actually my first regional that I ever fished. I was fishing back in a little creek. I mean, it was like one of those, you know, like literally, it's not even a creek, it's a yeah, crack. We yeah, call it a crack. Yeah. It was a little log jam, and I and I 
I could get over the log jam, but I had to kind of get the front end over, then trim the motor up, and yeah. then kind of get co-angling everybody oh, on yeah, the like, front yeah, and go slide up, over yeah. the side. Well, you know, Shoes World went in there and practiced that way with the guy that practiced with me. And then there was a split in one of the log jams. There was two of them. There was like one log jam, and then there was one that was just like a log that had a V in it yeah. that you had to go across too. It was immediately after it. Well, I get across the first one, and then I'm working my way up to the second. I troll the motor up there, pull my troll motor up, put the V of the boat on the top of it. My co angler in the back, he grabs his jig rod. While I have the boat on top of the log, drops his jig down in the V no. of the log, catches the three pounder. What? Yeah, and that was the only fish we caught back there that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did a he did a snatch and grab. Yeah, yeah. He did a snatch and grab. While I was on top of the log with that the snatch boat, and grab right there. shaking what? and all of that, and he catches a three pounder right there. We never caught another fish that day in, oh my in gosh. that little place. So not too I much drama. I would have made him push out. The yeah. Rest of the yeah. Way, like. right. Not too much drama, but one of those I can't believe what just happened. Oh my right. gosh. I hope he's not watching this right now. Uh, I don't even remember his name. <laughs> that was a long time ago. What about you, Andrew? I mean, mine isn't near as cool as Scott's either, but... Uh, yeah, we suck, yeah. don't we? <laughs> we yeah. should have went last. Yeah, no doubt. Nobody's going to listen to ours now because ours suck. <laughs> yeah. Well, last year we were at Cumberland. I've talked about Cumberland a lot. But, yeah. Uh, the first day, uh, I'm running back to weigh in, and I literally I was so adrenaline-filled because I had two fish at 250, and I had to leave at 350, or at 3. So I had 10 minutes left. Oh, I had God. two... And I pulled into a pocket, and I caught three fish in 10 minutes. Wow. The very last 10 minutes that I could wow. fish. And I'm, I start running back, and I'd actually cut it a little close. I'd left at, like, I don't know, 303. Yeah. Which that's I don't good. remember. And, and <laughs> yeah, because B-Lat picked me up. So I'm running up the river, and I'm hauling oh, butt. You were going, And there buddy. was there was floaters everywhere. <laughs> like, And I'm just going. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah. it, my boat lifts. It goes, Thoom! and just everything just goes free. And I'm like, oh, no. And it goes, ting, ting, ting. And we do like two, three sixties. Really? It. Yeah. And it knocked the midsection and lower unit off my boat. You when hit I, a log. Oh, hit a log. I, I couldn't I see it. That. It was under the water. Yeah. You know? I remember yeah. That. But I mean, completely sheared it off. Everything went quiet. It was. Slow it was motion. like, it just, hmm. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like no. Matrix. And, I, and I, I had enough time hey, to say, hold oh. on. And the guy like, like grabs down this little Japanese kid yeah. that used to travel Yamamoto. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it was, and that yeah. boat goes, and he's just sitting there like nothing. I'm like hanging out of the boat, like got my foot and everything caught in the steering wheel. Wow. I mean, it was bad. I, I, I remember you go, coming past me. I remember thinking, that dude has balls of steel. Because there were dogs <laughs> everywhere. I'm riding like 40. Andrew comes by me. I mean, it's like all air. I'm I was like, chopping. I, I was, was like, going. Wow, dude. that dude's And then a little while later, bad. he's sitting there like this all wet. Yeah, and then like literally, like I come around the corner and he was standing up. I was like, I know what happened. <laughs> I know what happened. <laughs> happened. Because well, it, it was I'd too cut, many. I cut it too close. <laughs> yeah, and you it had was, to go. I had to go. Yeah. And and Beelight was fortunate <laughs> enough. I actually got passed by two boats that didn't pick me up. Really? Oh wow. And Beelight stopped. No questions asked. Like, dude, well, what we got to do? I said, oh, wow. I said, can you take my fish? Said, Absolutely. We got to go though. We got to yeah. go. And he he took my fish in, That's and I good. the next day I fished out of a, a boat from FLW. Yeah. But yeah, like it was uh it was pretty scary. That. It was wow. scary. I remember that. Wow. All right, we're talking about jumping uh, beaver uh, waterfalls and stuff. I'm sure you got some crazy uh, backwater stories. I, I was trying to debate on what one to go with, but <laughs> which one to you know, go with? like what one went so bad, and then what ones went so good. But uh, uh, the most memorable one was. Uh, we went to Red River, you know, and, and, and you know, I brought that 17-foot crest liner. It had, like, yeah. a 75 mercury on it. And I ran down to the lock, locked through, ran another 30 minutes or so. I mean, it was it was like a two-and-a-half-hour ordeal just to get to where I was going. And then I had this small pipe, you know, that I had to take the jack plate all the way up and just completely floor the motor and, you know, get it up over it and then uh, and then take two-by-fours. And actually, uh, me and my co-handler had to push on the, the lip of the pipe. Oh my to uh, gosh. push the boat in and and uh you know once you got in there you would catch them in like you know 15 minutes you know it was like every throw but um as you were in there you know the water was dropping right so coming back the second day uh it went from like there there was no water i mean there was just a a, a, a splash of water coming over the there's a trickle oh yeah like it, there was none left so and, you pull up there's a trickle and you're yeah, like and i got i got the fish again you know and i'm like I, yeah you know so i i back up and i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna you know, hit it running? Yeah, I'm gonna force it through there, right? And and I floored it. And when it hit that pipe in the in the motor part 
hit the back of the pipe, it just, I mean, it just stopped. And like, I mean, it was like, everything's stuck. out of the water. Yeah, it yeah. was bad. And so, so we called Bill and we, we couldn't figure out what to do. And <laughs> he said, we're allowed to get out and tr try to, you know, you're allowed to get out of the boat to leave an area. Yeah, you know? right. But so here we are stuck in this pipe. It's all dark. You know, all that's hanging out is the motor out the back. And I'm thinking, we can't even, like, get something to lift it up to get it out of this. But, like, this boat's going to end up. <laughs> it's going to be here forever. Yeah, it's, that's where it's going to stay. <laughs> yes. And somehow we got in the water and we got in the front and it, the boat would move to the left and right about a half an inch. Yeah. And we just kept doing it and kept doing it. So, like, an hour later, like, every once in a while we'd bend a little bit of it. And actually while we were sitting in there, it was kind of plugging it. Yeah. And that, the water was actually coming up. <laughs> we sat there so long. It, it was, it was, uh flooding yes yeah, so it was behind. pushing right so and then and then eventually we got one little they just like, shot you out yeah, just, and then we got on plane and we <laughs> like ran, kids going on a slide yeah and we <laughs> ran back like you know was, you know that two and a half hours and I, I think we went in early because i was just like you're freaked oh out. yeah i'm like yeah how did like it was just a, it was a miracle that we made it out of that pipe oh my and that gosh. Boat's not in there and then yeah. we ended up winning the tournament. So it was, it was awesome. awesome. I just keep visiting. Like the, when you go to the water parks and you shoot out the pipe. <laughs> I just keep envisioning <laughs> that. Like, here comes John and his partner. Poof. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's was, pretty good. It was awesome. You got anything better than that, Tom? Not better than that, but I, uh, like the craziest thing I've, I've witnessed. It was in the back of one of my, when I guided Lake Fork, there was a sweet spot, a, a creek that a lot of share lunkers, 13 pound fish had come out, a lot of double digits. And there was a three pronged tree that laid in the back. And you go fish it, and that was a juice, and the creek channel went underneath this thing. The crown was out there, you'd always catch them in it. So I told guide customers, I'd kind of build it up, and you know, sell the story, like, hey man, like we've caught all these big fish, I'm telling you this is the one, we get on the end of this thing, and we're gonna catch a big one here. If there's a big one back here, and they're biting it, they're gonna get it. So I get amped up. Well, when you throw a chatterbait, and spinnerbait, or square bill, you don't throw it across it. Right. You get to the end of it, and you bring it down. Well, I'd always tell the story, and they'd be amped up, and one of the guys would just throw a Hail Mary, throw it across the log, and snag it. Yeah. All right, so I, I learned later that you don't tell the story until you got to the end. Then said, "Look, guys, you know, here's the juice, blah blah blah." Well, I tell I'm telling the one guys early on, and the guy, of course, he can't wait. Takes his chatterbait, throws it across, catches it, and I'm like, okay, you know, we can hit it on the way back out. So I go in there, and the wind's blowing. It's blowing straight in the cove. Come up there, and it's blowing in. I'm trying to hold it, and we're bouncing, and it's up in the crown. And I want to get the two dollar chatterbait back. So we go in there, and the trolling motor's going. <laughs> You know, it's hitting the log. Just bump, 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 blow the thing out. It's less than five feet of water. Mud, everything. Like, all right. I said, we'll, we'll try it on the way back. Well, we start going away. I put the trolling motor in high 36 going away. Well, his buddy in the back, he didn't get a cast in there. He turns around and throws his chatterbait into the tree, brings it down the log like you're supposed to. Ten pounder. Dang. Oh really? Fish are dumb. I mean, as it's, Fish are yeah. Fish are so dumb. I, mean, I don't know if it started up and the shad got loose, but I'm like, like everything yeah. we learned about being quiet and all that. Sort of like my that's story. What, yeah. yeah. It's sort of like my You did that. Didn't you go like crash into the log? Oh, yeah, last tournament. Yeah. Yeah, I got hung up and I was, because I threw across. Then, you know, yeah. I just learned <laughs> Wait, something man. else. Yeah. I threw across and yeah. got hung and I was like, oh my gosh. And I went in, popped it off, hit the whole tree and moved it like a foot. I turned around and I flipped right in the, the, the end of it and caught a five pounder. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is crazy. Never yeah. 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 Never yeah. That is yeah. crazy. <laughs> well, guys, we got a few last minute things to do on the boat. Awesome view. Thanks for hanging out with it. If you stayed to the end of the video, thank you very much. Be sure to subscribe. And uh, if you're in the area, we're going to be here at Cherokee Lake. We're in Jefferson City, Tennessee. Wayne's going to be at the dam. We're going to have the booth set up. We've got tons of merch, hats, and everything. So uh, appreciate everybody. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon, guys. We'll see you soon. Let's get this thing started. Thanks for watching.